I had a pleasure in introducing Destiny Beacon to you. Um, when I was doing my research, I found out that she was born in Queensland. Maryborough in Queensland, but um, I think Mum was just passing through and warned me. And I've been in Melbourne since I was two years old. Yes, yeah, so we, we do tend to claim the ones that were born here, of course. Close to Virginia? It's an interesting place, Maryborough, yes. Probably, I can't say too much, there might be some Maryborough people here. No, it's, it's actually a very beautiful town with, with um, very lovely architecture. They've, they've restored a lot of the older buildings. Uh, Destiny, as she just said, did some works in Melbourne. Uh, she is exhibit, has exhibited widely uh, throughout Australia and throughout the world. Uh, probably you would know her photographic work. Um, that's, that's probably the area that most of you will be familiar with. But today she's actually going to talk about her installation work, which is beside me. Okay. Oh, I thought Craig would have a microphone on the stand, but anyway, beggars can't be choosers. And plus they also set all my stuff up, I suppose, in, in the moving van from Melbourne and what it cost a fortune. Yes. And, and, and painted and stuff. And anyway, thanks for all making the effort to get to this side of the gallery and um, have a look. Um, where do I start though? I'd say um, it's called My Living Room in Brunswick, but I call it to myself, I call it the curators made me do it. Because <laughs> 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 basically I'm a bum photographer and I just take pictures and whatnot. Um, and, and that sort of thing. And they come to your home, these curators, you know, and I don't have a studio or nothing. And, I didn't know they were looking at everything. I thought they'd come to look at the slides. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they had such eagle eyes. And yes, and then you get the official letter from Mr. Doug Hall and your living room in Brunswick. And I, <laughs> I thought to myself, what place is such a dump, you know? And I'm so embarrassed about it, but yeah, in the evening it's okay and what have you, and people are around partying and they're not looking at things. But uh, I don't know, it feels a bit strange to have your, your home um, so far away. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm the only artist that's not homesick. <laughs> yes. And normally I don't have, I do have, um, in my lounge I don't really have, I only want to have about two or three pictures um, of my, you know, that I've taken myself. They usually do hide mold stains and rising damp and, <laughs> and stuff like that. And usually they lay around the floor and keep the foot through the frames and smash it up. Um, and that kind of thing. Uh, so it's a pretty sad and pathetic sort of, I think, the, the, the way that I sort of live. And I'd like to sort of live better and what have you. But I try to do what I can and that kind of thing. Um, with photography, uh, just sort of learnt it, you know, this decade, the 90s. And my friend Virginia Fraser had a dark room, and sort of in her laundry, and I, yeah, got through the cobwebs and, and, had a, and she taught me how to use the black and white sort of thing with all the lotions and the potions. And, you know, sort of, I could do it too, but it's just such labour-intensive work and stuff. And, and it was night time, and I'm sure something touched me on the, on the back. And I looked, and there was nothing. <laughs> and I was frightened. I said, back of this in the dark room. <laughs> but Polaroid pictures are um, easy to take, but I don't really, I don't know, it's sort of, perhaps I'm a lazy girl, I don't know what it is, but I like the colour of them and stuff, but they don't sponsor me or anything. I've, I've written and begged, you know, and so, <laughs> can I get them cheaper and stuff? I said, well, we can give you a 10% discount, you've got to pay for the freight. You <laughs> bugger that, too. <laughs> so, and, and also I use um, sort of photocopy shops and stuff, but mainly they're used to doing business and office work sort of photocopying. So that, that, and they see sort of the prints and stuff, and they just sort of think I'm sort of, <laughs> what's this? You know, sort of dolls with their heads off and stuff. What's this? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Queensland Art Gallery. There will be a Queen's Garden tour for the top of the Asia Pacific Gallery in the Leaving from the information desk at 2 o'clock. Please be advised that the Queen's Garden tour will be beginning from the information desk in the main foyer at 2 o'clock. Thank you. You all got that? <laughs> 
Yeah, so, I don't know. Um, I like looking at images um, and seeing things sort of in geometrics and things and kind of things like that, uh, rather than, I don't know, rather than just do something for the sake of it. And so I have these ideas of colour and, and shapes and stuff, but it's very hard with real people, because they always growl at you and say, hurry up, I want to get, and you know, what am I doing here and stuff like that. So I mainly use family and friends, <laughs> you know, and sort of get them, um, ask them to do something and, and what have you, but it's not them as individuals, just to model something, you know, and that takes a long process to sort of con people on to sort of, you know, can you, can you pose for me? I've got to do an exhibition and I need to make some photos, that kind of stuff. And I'm not really one of those sort of people that gets up in the morning and thinks, oh, I want to go to a dark room and smoke lotion and potions and, and <laughs> take pictures and stuff. I'm not labour intensive like Fiona Hall and stuff, but um, but I think a lot, you know, on the lounge. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> and I think about things, and I think it's very important for people to be informed about um, what happens in the world and stuff like that, you know. Read newspapers, even watch the telly, um, go here and go there, just be aware of your community as well as what's happening. And it doesn't cost a lot of money, but I really get depressed that people are so ignorant, you know, you try to make conversation, not, not you mob, but, but <laughs> down, down Melbourne, um, yeah, you know, you say, you know, like something really dramatic's happened in the world, or a big accident, or, or uh, floods, or, or people being killed and stuff. And, you know, you feel really bad about it and stuff, and you say, oh, what do you think of that? And I say, what? And I just think it's really appalling, you know, and I think to be an artist you, you should be aware of what's happening in the world and as an urban artist you've got no sort of, um, I don't know, I think it's an obligation that you should have because we have such a sort of sticky and awkward situation because in, in Melbourne, you know, like I don't think of myself as an artist or anything because my friends and family and people in the community, they know me from other dimensions and stuff like as, as a as a teacher and people, you know, being on committees and being involved in this, that and the other, everyone got a shock <laughs> and, they, and they don't even know my, I, I do pictures and stuff or anything. Yeah, and so I don't sort of live as an artist because I don't feel like I am because I don't, I suppose because you don't make any money. <laughs> and I just, yeah, like curators get on your back and you, you try to appease them and stuff. They're terrible. <laughs> they fax you, they phone you, they, they come around and knock on your door and stuff. But um, I still don't know why I do it, because I think I just want to say something. Um, it's plain and simple, I suppose. It's just things that I feel while I'm sitting on the couch. Well, and, and I don't know, like reading papers and watching TV and stuff and what have you. But I do leave the house. <laughs> but I don't know. Sometimes I like. To, I, I'm amazed at this, that I get such so many work. So I see other Aboriginal artists in Melbourne, and they get big grants and stuff. And I say, Destiny, I've got thirty thousand dollar grant. Can you tell me what gallery I can exhibit in? And I think to myself, goodness, you know. <laughs> and and that sort of thing. Uh, so I don't really, and people putting their foot through my art because it lays around the house with a space and stuff. Um, so I don't have any concept of like being anything special or really, but I don't think, you know, we're just an artist and somebody doing pictures and um, expressing themselves. I kind of feel like I'm doing a hobby, you know? And, but one good thing about it is um, I, I'll get to travel now and again, I've never got to go overseas and, and I've got to go to Cuba because of the art and I've got to go to Johannesburg because of the art, I've got to go to Queens, Brisbane because of the art. And it's, it's really good because otherwise, you know, I'll just be home sitting there and watching Ricky Lake by now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so not employed at the moment, yeah. So it's really sad and depressing and that kind of thing. Oh, geez, I'm <laughs> and, yeah, so I don't want to, yeah, that, we don't, I don't worry, I'm not going to bring out a violin. But, 
But basically, like with dolls and, and the imagery I use, it's things I find here and there, and, and friends, a lot of friends give me stuff and what have you. <laughs> and basically, you feel sorry for these little dolls laying in trash and treasure markets or here and there, the black ones, you know, looking all forlorn and stuff. And, you know, you look at the price and they're going up too. <laughs> People have realised that black dolls... <laughs> I don't know why, it just seems recently. But, uh, yeah, so just a matter of getting them sort of and taking them home. But I'm not really into dolls or anything. You know, I don't play with them or talk to them and, and stuff like, you know. Um, and basically, I'm probably a, a naughty doll um, minder. But, the, yeah, so just put them here and there and, and what have you. But I, I like the dolls because... <laughs> It's too much hard yakka getting people to pose. Because <laughs> they start swearing and you hurry up and do this and do that and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, the dolls don't, yeah, they're just, they're just there and it's easy. Maybe I'm just the laziest girl in town, I don't know. <laughs> um, and sometimes I think being in the arts is sort of like the, I don't know, the last bastion for an unemployable girl, you know. <laughs> it is true, that's a sad part of it. <laughs> um, but I've always been political. I come from a very political family that's been involved with um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait, Torres Strait Islander issues. My family, um, yeah, there's seven kids, seven siblings, and they're all involved in things and, and what have you. So it's just been expected of us in growing up and start to be involved and mother making us go to meetings and stuff since we were this high and, and, and listen to this Margaret Tucker or this one and that one and, and, and hear about what happened way back when before the war and that, ha that, that stuff. But also because my mum comes from the Torres Strait, she also taught us about the culture and wanted to teach us, she made the food and taught us and told us all the stories and, and ghost stories too. And she wanted to teach us language and dancing, and, but when we were young, I said, Mum, we want to watch Mickey Mouse and, on the TV and stuff. And, and when we got older, we started to get interested, because we're living in Melbourne, we're sort of part of the Kua community also, because my mum sort of um, got involved in a lot of welfare work. But initially it wasn't welfare work, it was sort of people coming to stay, and women she was worried about that were in the pubs and, and sick and drunk or being abused, and, what have you, and she'd bring them home and stuff. And I'd be going to school and you'd, you'd, you'd wake up in the morning and there'd be people all over the floor and whatnot, and, and that kind of thing. And it's a, I don't know, but they were interesting and stuff, and it just sort of, I don't know, it just sort of continues as sort of like people coming into the home and people, um, they don't contribute anything. We, used to, we had to look after them, <laughs> um, and that sort of thing. But I don't know, just the home seems like a centre for ideas and I grew up that way and I don't know, just, just thinking and stuff. But I don't know if people sort of think and have, I don't know, uh, because I do, because the curators get on my back and I have to do something immediately, I've already got that feeling about this, that and the other and I try to, try to get things together for the time, but I've already had this train of thought about something or what have you. I don't know. And you just do it. 